Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good morning. I hope everybody is doing good. Today's weather is nice. And most of you already joined, so the others would be able to catch that from the video recorded action. Now, let us continue our uh, lecture, the long lecture, actually. Uh, now, the last thing we started it was we were talking about the pitfalls of the capital budgeting. And we underlined some pitfalls and, of course, apart from using the capital budgeting, there are other methodologies that are used in addition to the capital budgeting. Uh, they are well-known uh, and very popular ones as well. One is the accounting and the economic income approaches in the context of the, context of the uh, capital budgeting. So accounting and economic income, uh, they actually measure the alternatives, they're measuring the project and their valued and they're used as alternatives to the basic discounted incremental cash flow approach. And they're used in the standard capital budgeting model. So the project economic income is equal uh, after tax cash flows plus changing the investment market value. As with the basic capital budgeting model, the interest is ignored for cash flow calculation and instead it included as the component of discount rate. So economic income, as we said, is can be used as a cash flow plus the uh, change in the market. Are you professor, yes, please. We don't see we don't see your screen. Sorry. Yes, me also. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just a second. What happened? Now, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So, accounting and economic approach uh, used in the context of the capital budgeting. Uh, so, economic income is a cash flow plus uh, change in the market value is ending minus beginning value, or we can re rearrange the formula. Economic income is equal to cash flow minus economic depreciation. But uh, where we get the economic depreciation is the economic depreciation is equal to market value of beginning minus ending value. This will give you the economic depreciation. So either in this way or that way, it will give you the same answer. So uh, a project's accounting income is reported uh, net income on company's financial statement that results from an uh, investment in a project. So accounting income will be differentiating from uh, economic income uh, because ac accounting depreciation is based on the original cost of the investment, not a market value. And financing costs are considered as a separate line item and subtracted out uh, to arrive the net income. The, so the basic capital budgeting model and financing costs are reflected in VAWC. I have not introduced you this VAWC, but we're gonna go through it in the coming chapter, which is value weighted average of cost of capital. We're gonna go deeply and in detail. So this is what we're gonna do. That's why I, did, I decided not to go in this ch chapter, but if you read the book, you will see like it briefly is being introduced. But we're gonna go deeply in the next coming chapter. Um, here's the economic profit measure. Uh, is the profit that it's excess of dollar cost of capital invested in a project. It is calculated as uh, NOPAT minus dollar weighted average of cost of capital. So NOPAT is the net operating profit after tax, like EBIT times one tax rate. So uh, and VACC is dollar cost of capital, which is weighted average cost of capital times total capital. And just just formulation, okay, about the, this VACC, when we get into example, you'll understand better. So economic profit uh, here, once economic profit is determined, uh, it is easy to, uh, it's easily applied to the valuation of the asset. And MPV based on economic profit is called market value added. And uh, uh, why it's called as a market value added because it measures uh, how much in terms of dollars is going to be added to the from the certain project to the net worth. Actually, the economic profit approach focuses on returns 
to all suppliers of the capital, which includes both debt and the equity holders. Therefore, uh, it is appropriate to discount rate is like to use like weighted average cost of capital. So this VACC is used as discount rate as a cost of capital. So there is, uh, there is another method. I'm going to go over quickly from about each method, but I'm gonna explain you one by one with a calculation in Excel, okay? I want to just finish this uh, methodologies and I'll go giving you some examples, then you'll get it clear what, what it means exactly. So, so the economic profit and the residual income, there's a claims valuation models for capital budgeting as well. Talking about the residual income methodology, it is estimating the return on equity and it is estimating the equity charge, which is, uh, which is the product uh, of the return on equity and the book value of the equity. So subtracting the equity charge from the net income, that gives us a residual income. So RI is residual income during the period. Uh, NI is the net income during the period and R times P T minus one, the equity chart for the period, and which is the required rate of return on equity and times the beginning of the period of the book while of equity. We're gonna go through the example. So basically what does the residual income measures? It measures the return on remaining income, okay? On the, at the end of the project. So economic profit, uh, here, residual income claims and valuation models for capital budgeting is if you want to calculate the MPV for the residual income is the summation of the all residual income. So we're gonna go through the example that you get better. Here's the example of given the, of the residual income. Suppose we are given the net income from one to four years, 46, 49, 56, 56. And the book value of the equity that you purchased, uh, 78, 81, 84, and 85. And there is a required rate of return on equity. Uh, okay, 12, 12, 12, 12, like it's ROYA, if you're familiar with this return on equity. So this is a given, this information is given. So what we are doing, we want to apply uh, the previous formula. The previous formula was residual income. This formula we'd like to apply it, okay? Residual income is equal net income minus uh, R times B T minus one. So in the first step, book value of the equity, we're just getting 78, 81, 84, 85. Then we put the ROYA here and required earnings on equity is equal to 9, 10, 10, 10. Then how do we get it? It's 78. So 12% 12 of 78, it is 9. 12% of 81 is 10. 12% of 84 is 10 and so on. And net income, we get it uh, is given here. The required earnings on equity the and residual income is calculated in the following way. So from net income, we're the, the, uh, the, uh, subtracting the required earnings on equity that we calculated here. So we just apply the formula and then we get the residual income. And this is the income that is left at the end of the project. So we're trying to measure the, actually the return on residual value. The residual means the remaining value at the end of the project. And if you get the MPV of it with a discount rate, which is 12%, and the MPV with that amount will be equal to $126, okay? I'm not calculating, you know how to calculate the MPV of it. So uh, the, there's another methodology which is called the claims valuation method. It's simply divide the claims of the suppliers of the capital and the values of the equity distributors, okay? Who supplies the capital? Uh, uh, the creditors. And we have on the other side, the equity holders. So the claims of the creditors are the cash flow to debt holders that consist of interest and plus the principal payments. And they are discounted at the cost of debt. 
and the claims of the owners, the debt holders, they are the cash flow, equity holders are the cash flow, so equity holders, there are, div uh, div there are dividends and the share repurchases are discounted at the cost of equity. So we are given here, there's one question. Uh, the net, net income shows in income statement where residual income goes to the balance sheet under the return. Yes, true, true. It's under the equity side. Very true. Now, uh, here we have a company, the portfolio for a company that has got fallen estimates in millions. So cash flow before interest and taxes was 80, 85, 95, and 95. And suppose the company, this company is going to pay the taxes or the interest, which is four, three, two, one. So we subtract interest and cash flow before taxes, like earnings before taxes, ABT. Then we apply the taxes, tax amount as well. Then we derive the operating cash flow after tax. This is what we get it. And there's a principal payment. We know when you borrow the money, there is a principal amount and there is the interest amount. The interest amount we already subtract and there's a principal payment. So here's the question. This question is given here. What are the distributions to the owners if dividends are 50% of earnings after principal payment? And second question, what is the value of the distribution to the owner if the required rate of return is 12% before the tax, uh, before the tax cost of debt is 8%. So let us go with a distribution to owners. So in year one, the interest expense and principal amount should be added. We in total, we pay 15, 15, 15 in all years. Okay. If you add all the things. So interest plus principal, interest plus principal, interest plus principal. Then starting with the operating cash flow, which was 46, 49, 56, 56. This is given from the uh, data parameter here, okay? That we calculated. And now uh, we need to subtract the principal payment to bond holder. After that, we're gonna derive with the cash flow after principal payments. When we do it, we come up with this amount and we should multiply by 50% of proportion of the money that is distributed, okay? That is going to be given to shareholders as dividends, okay? Distribution amount. Like dividends are 50% of the earnings after the principal payment. So one, once we just deduct the principal payments, we have, we have to get uh, payment as a dividends to the shareholders uh, as 50%, like half of it should be paid as dividends to the shareholders uh, after principal payment. So, which is 35 times 50% of it, uh, we will get 17, 19, and 21, 21 respectively for each year. This is equity distribution, okay? And if you proceed like to, cal to calculate the value uh, of the claims, we take the just present value of debt claims. Like if you see, uh, we just get the NPV here. Let me get just calculated. 50, 50, 50, 50. Oh, sorry, 15. I'm sorry. 15, 15, 15, and 15. You can use the financial calculator. You can use the NPV. It's Excel spreadsheet. NPV. And Ray was 8%, 8, 8. Okay, this is what we get it. This is what we get it, $50 for the claims as uh, debt holders, okay? The $50 the net present value, or if you just put it in the financial calculator, just substitute this number like payment 15, number of is four, and interest is 8% solving for the present value of it. And the present value of the equity claims are here, then we calculate the MPV same for this. So 
This is for depth. And this is for equity. Equity is is 17, 19, 21. 17, 19, 21, 21. And our equity value is interest is 12%. Okay. It's MPV. We do it and we let's do it for and we use here 12%. 58. Okay. This is what we get it here. 58. And if you sum it up. This will be the value of company. Okay, 180. It's here they calculated as 109. So therefore the value of the firm will be equal to 109. So this is another methodology which is used. Okay. Uh, so there are different methods are used, but I want you to pay more attention to the standard capital budgeting and the thing that I'm going through now as well. I'm gonna go again. And if you go for Excel, uh, let me just open a new sheet here. So we have here, uh, let's say, given the following fixed capital investment, which is uh, minus 150. And we have sales. which is 150, 200, 250, 200 and 150. This is sales. Then we have a uh, variable cost, which is 75, 100, 125, 100, and 75. And we have fixed cost. Fixed cost, 20, 20, 20. As the name suggests, it's fixed, okay? It doesn't change. The fixed cost doesn't change. And we've got the depreciation straight line zero, which is uh, step 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. And of course, then we can calculate Earnings before tax, ABT. I'm doing for this economic profit and accounting profit. Okay, guys. Economic income, like cash flow minus depreciation expense, minus economic depreciation, or cash flow uh, plus uh, beginning value of my of market minus of market value. So we are getting just a change of the market value economic and accounting income. So cash flow plus change in market value. This is what we are doing actually, trying to get it calculated. So minus, minus, minus 25. And tax is 40% of the amount. And then we have operating income after tax. And we are adding back the salvage wallet at the end of the year. Uh, let me put just directly after tax salvage value. After tax salvage value is equal to 6,000. And we know how to get it. If the salvage value was 10,000 and the tax rate is 40%, tax rate is 40%. 
and 10,000 minus tax rate of 40, that will end up with uh, 6,000. And the cash flow, operating cash flow after tax. So operating cash flow after tax. Okay. So we have investment cost, which is minus 150. And we have these cash flows that are left with. And of course, we need to add the depreciation back here, guys. The depreciation should be added back, like 30. So this, this. Yes. It's not 6,000, sorry, 60. Sorry. I'm just ignoring the thousands, but I'm putting it like 60. It was 100 minus 40% of tax. That would give you 60. The salvage value was 100. That means that at the end of the year, it will be remaining like 100. Now we can calculate the MPV. This is what we do basically calculating the MPV as generally. And MPV, we are using the discount rate of 10%. This guys, this is the example from the book. That's what I'm doing actually. Plus cost, that would give us the MPV. Let me put it MPV here. Okay. Actually, just you have question. Professor, don't have any interest expense, and if no, does mean that the capital budgeting comes solely from equity? Uh, yes, in this case, that's very true. That our uh, assets are totally financed by equity side. If it's there's no interest, but this for simplicity, but in there will be cases that we're gonna we have to include our interest expense that's very true it's good point that you mentioned in this that if we do not finance it uh, if we are solely using just uh, equity side that means that our total asset is financed by equity only if we don't have any interest in here but uh salvage well it's it seems for me too big here too much big it cannot be 60 because it's it should be around if we have 150 and half of it of the fifth capital investment i think it's better to make it 10 and 10 minus so salvage value will be 10 and minus 40 percent of it it will be uh 10 percent uh, four so four minus 10 so 10 minus four it's gonna be come up with six actually so 10 minus four, four is the tax rate, tax amount, okay. Now an IRR, we don't need to calculate it, but if you wish, you can calculate, let's make it okay, Rust. once we did it, it's better to go with IRR as well. Just take up this number and close it 26%. And okay, the next step, what we do, we need to calculate the, Economic income for this company. Uh, All right. <clears throat> what is our cost of capital? Cost of capital is 10%. Mm. It's 10%. Mm, okay. Here, 10%, 0.1. Uh, so economic income, we should consider the following values like uh, beginning value, ending value and change in market value 
Then we're gonna put the operating cash flow after tax. And we're gonna derive economic income itself, okay? So first of all, it's what we need to calculate. So our beginning value, that means we need to calculate. So to calculate the beginning market value, uh, let me put it more M value and ending M value. And this is changing M value. So beginning M value is just a present or is the present value of all future cash flows, okay, that we have it. We're just gonna get the NPV of the all future cash flow. So we have operating cash flows here. We're gonna consider the present value of future cash flow. So here, till the uh, zero. So we put, let me just copy this and here for more. Now. But I don't need any investment cost. I don't consider the investment cost. I'm taking just present value of all future cash flows, okay? Here is PV of all cash flows. Then uh, I will go through So how do you do it? I do not consider the today's cash flow. I will consider starting from the next year cash flow and go take the remaining cash flows for the second year. For the third year, I will consider the remaining one. And let me, I did not put any number of the years. That would be a bit inappropriate. Excuse me, professor. I didn't understand here. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, going. Why? Yeah, I'm going to explain why again. You... Okay. I'm going to. I will make it not because I was. I felt that I, I'm quick in explanation here. Okay. Now, so uh, once I need to calculate the present uh, the present value of future cash flows for today, for year zero. Okay, I'm going to bring it here. I need to consider everything that I have from year one, okay? I will consider from year one, everything, all the cash flows. If I'm calculating the present value of this cash flow for today. So I'm taking the just present value of all cash flows with a 10% of discount rate, getting the cash flows now. Did you understand what I did in here, in year first cash, first uh, beginning value? Like I'm considering the present uh, yes, value. Okay. For second what year. What formula did you use? MPV. What formula? MPV. It's just MPV without uh, subtraction of the investment cost. When you do the MPV, it's just giving you the summation of present value cash flows, the future cash flows. Mm, okay. It is the same thing. Uh, let me just do it like this. If you take, oops. If you just take the present value, let me do the present value here. Look, what I can do here, this divided by one plus, one plus 0 0.0. Oh, let me put just one point. 1.10 and this to the power of one. Okay, I'm gonna do these things for all. Okay, now, if you sum it all, I get just summation of it, okay? Sum. Okay, 
This is what we call, or you can just type NPV and calculate NPV for this. It's up to you. Whatever way you choose it, you can do it. So for second one, I will consider for the year one, the cash flow, the beginning value for the year one, you should consider the remaining one, not the current one. The current one should not be included. So you are including only the remaining one. Okay. Yeah, do any there is okay. Wait, there is something going wrong here. Okay, let me just recalculate. This part is not correct. That means I have to change something. MPV. Let me try with the MPV because the number doesn't match with the correct answer. I don't want to misguide you. If this is the case, okay, and I will try my best because I would like, this is with MPV. This is MPV and beginning value, beginning market value this and I will put this so we'll have two ways of calculation okay so that in order to compare our answers is just summation so you calculated NPV for the first row right yeah, the first row I calculated MPV, and I'm calculating no. now in the, uh, separately each number, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, the sum. There's something goes, wait. 1.10, 1, 2. Yes, now it works. Now I got my mistake. I'll explain it. the interest rate in the power of years is wrong yeah 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 that's good thank you thank you so much i'm just trying to okay then we need to make it manually everything everything manual should be done so we need to bring it everything to here this is correct if you add it but uh... so when you make it manually the present value of each cash flow that means that uh, for each year you have to calculate separately the the power of it okay for this year this is the interest rate and for this should i include this okay 
So guys, uh, what I thinking to do in this way, make it more. And if you just take it, everything to the present value of it. M to the power one. So uh, discounted cash flow. And we have this beginning value mark, beginning market value. That will give us and whenever you calculate this one, that means uh, this is for this. So for each cash flow, for each cash flow, we should calculate separately. For each cash flow, we should calculate separately. That means we need to come up with a certain formula uh, that will let us to calculate, okay? Because uh, this, so that means we have to go uh, by formula. The formula will be in the following way. So 45, divided by 1.10 so it will take it will consume the time guys for you so for you if you go like this like taking the individual each present value so the logic in here is that uh, whenever you calculate the cash flow for a corresponding year you have to take the present value until that year so you have to consider the the power of it until that year not to the year zero so this for this so that will consume more time. It's just saving the time, it's better to you uh, to use the Excel function, which giving you the MPV. MPV just automatically recalculates everything. Okay. So that means we don't need this. So let me just just get one formula. 145 divided by 1 my 10 to the power of 1 plus 60, 1.10 to the power of 2 plus divided by 1.10 to the power of 3 plus divided by 1.10 to the power of four plus 1.10 to the power of five. So the same thing you do for this cash, it should not. Got it? So you have to type manually. You have to type manually. Okay, it just doesn't consider the last years. So you have to type manually. So it's better for you. Just an alternative way to show you. I, sh I shared with you, but it's just alternative way. But you don't have to use it. 
way, but don't use it. Use the NPV because NPV is just quicker and getting the things done. So ending market value, it is uh, calculated in a way, it's not a calculation, it's just copying and pasting the number. It is the beginning of the first year. So ending value for the year zero, actually uh, these guys are not starting. Yeah, like this. So our, uh, because we're talking about the first years, okay? This is year zero, in year zero we don't have anything. So uh, ending value of the first year, it is the beginning value of the second year. This is how it's calculated, the ending value. So if it's, this is the case, this is what we get it. Ending value for second year, it is the beginning of the third year. And we just drag it and we should get all the numbers that we want. Now, and yeah, let me draw something. Change uh, is we are getting just change between the ending and the beginning. Ending minus beginning value. Professor, could you show it again? The screen was lagging. Okay. Now, uh, did you understand how to calculate the beginning value, the market value using the NPV? Don't pay attention to this business bit taking the time consuming you. It's better to just type in the MPU function. You already know that MPU function without subtraction in investment cost. If you got this one, uh, how to get the ending market value, it is just beginning of the cam coming year market value. Ending market value is the beginning of the coming year. So that means ending of the first year, it is the beginning of the second year. Ending of the second year is the beginning of the third year. Ending of the third year is the beginning of the fourth and so on. I just drag it. I just find this one. I just put equal sign and put this. Sorry, this number. And I drag this and I get this result. Okay. And change, change we find in the way is ending minus beginning ending minus beginning ending minus beginning this will get it so we get negative change and operating cash flow after tax we're already given here okay 45 45 45 and now we are asked to calculate economic income. Economic income is just from, if you go to the formula, it's operating cash flow minus change in value. Let me just show you the formula itself. Where is it? Here. Oh, we're adding back. Look, we can make economic income like economic depreciation and economic income is equal to cash flow plus change in value. But I said minus because we're gonna subtract it. It's a negative, so negative to minus. So net minus to plus would be minus. But anyways, uh, 45 plus negative sign that would give you uh, economic income, which is 25. Let me just put it here. And drag for all years. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, very true. You are thinking correctly, Begjan, because uh, when it's a negative sign in here, in here, that means uh, that shows that your market value was 219 and at the end it becomes 196. So there is a loss in market value. The market value is going slowly down and down. So this is what it implies to. Very good. Very good. You are really getting things are in a very detail. An economic return. This is economic income, how we get it. This is what's our aim and we can calculate economic return as well. It is this economic income divided by beginning value of the market. So beginning market value and we drag it for all and of course it's going to be same at 10 percent this is what we get this was our aim to calculate it's a f famous but it still doesn't give that much things and doesn't give a good interpretation but still people and still companies are using this like to calculate economic income and economic return on that Let me save it for a purpose not to lose it. And come cap budget. Okay. We don't need it. Now, do you have any questions regarding this? If not, I would like to demonstrate one more thing to you related to Monte Carlo analysis. Uh, it is very important as well. I will go quickly and maybe I will spend a little bit more time on that. If there's no questions, Professor, how this change will be reflected in the balance sheet? Uh, actually, this change is not uh, done in the balance sheet. We know that uh, the problem that the most of the balance sheets are recorded in book value and it's not updated and it's only the update it takes the place. So it depends on the company. If the company is running the financial services and there the company is only uh, trading most of the uh, assets uh, consists of financial securities that are bought with the purpose to resell it. And this affects the balance sheet directly because the those companies that are performed the, uh, in terms of financial services they are updating their balance sheets in terms of the market value but companies with the fixed asset they do not uh, reevaluate their assets because they are based on the book value and the historical price the price that they paid uh, first time when they purchase equipment or property whatever the case and they depreciate with the accumulated depreciation so the balance sheet is affected only in this way but uh, Basically, this is calculated to calculate kind of taking into consideration the market value position. And we know if you remember uh, uh, that's true, but not all of the firms are doing this. It depends on the industry that we are involved in. They can it's matter of just playing around. You know, it depends on the which standards they're adhered to it's a gap or IPR if it's a gap it's not easy to do so the gap is more strict I know I know it's like related to earnings manipulation so on and so they can play out uh, with the taxes and so they will do those things just to benefit but it is done only in, it can be done only in IPR but in gap it will be very difficult because the gap is really it's a bit complicated and nobody can play with things like for example in life in IFRS life and FIFA is allowed but in gap only the life is allowed to use it so these things are very uh, dependent on the standards that the firm is using is the first second uh, the, it depends on the industry the firm is actually in 
And third is the country itself, like the, whether the country does uh, deep regulation, uh, deep control of the financial statement of the companies. But this we are doing whether the company, uh, we're trying to compare whether a certain project has got uh, economic value, okay? Some economic value. It's a, like future project. And this is market value and the book value Begjan is mostly related to the equip to the fixed capital investment in a certain project. It, this doesn't exist, but we're assuming if we invest this much, this will be the value and this will, how it, it will be affected. And the market value in this case, it is evaluated just discounting. And for the purpose, and we know that discount rate is always changing and is not the same in the all the years. So it will be changing from one year to another year. That, that makes really things more complicated even. Any questions? Okay, it seems there is. Yes, please. If you don't have any questions, However, the, because of the historical cost concept. Yes, yes, that's true. The only the depreciation will be recorded. That's very true. That's very true. If you don't have any questions, I would like to stop here and continue tomorrow i would like i wanted to share with you the regression analysis but i think i'm liking the time so i will do it tomorrow please feel free to ask any questions before you leave if no if you don't have any questions see you tomorrow then when do we have uh office sabrjan actually i don't have any office hours as i told at the beginning you can just write me we can arrange the appropriate time to both of us, okay? One time we can meet, because it's very difficult to arrange the time, like uh, to put some fixed time. So just tell me when you want and write me the email. I'll get in touch with you back as soon as possible so we can come up with a certain period of time regarding the office hours. But uh, I wanted to tell you that I will give, let's say, uh, just before the exam, I will give you one hour of revision before the final, uh, before the assessment one. We'll review everything. I will make things clear. So we, you, it's better for you to be, to read everything before that lecture so that we can go efficiently in terms of timing and in terms of uh, workout actually. Okay, if you don't have any question, thank you so much for your attention. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.